Every day you see a few more leaves sprouting and look at the bare grass. It's practically a foot tall already and it just started growing a, a few days ago. Hi, it's Alaska Granny. As preppers, we want to develop the characteristic of readiness, that we're ready for anything. We're ready for an emergency that can happen in an instant. Your dishwasher could stop working, the power could go out, you could have a wildfire, a winter storm, anything can happen. And the results are whatever you, wherever you are, whatever you have, that could be it. You need to deal with the things that you have already in place where you are and then face whatever the emergency that befalls you. So one of the things that I recommend that you make sure you have plenty of are socks and underwear. It's also a great idea to keep up with your laundry. What happens if there's an emergency and the water stops running or your electricity goes out and you don't have any clean clothes? Plus, what if there's some emergency that you have to quickly grab your family and head out to help a neighbor, a family member, or evacuate? You want to make sure that you have clean clothes that you can grab. Letting your laundry pile up can really seem like a monumental task that now we don't want to even get started. So if you pick away at it, keep up with it, then you don't have this big task hanging over you and you won't have a problem in an emergency. It's a great time of year to be heading outdoors and spending more time doing things like hiking and gardening. Make sure that you have some sturdy shoes. Don't just have flip-flops when you set out in your car. What happens if you get stranded by the side of the road? You need to have some sturdy shoes that you can get out and walk if you have to. Plus, it helps you enjoy the outdoors more if you have proper footwear. Even though it's summer, it can turn cold at any moment. Make sure you have plenty of extra blankets and quilts. Throw them over a chair. You can snuggle with them on a cool summer evening. There are supplies you want to have year round. Blankets, quilts, maybe even extra sleeping bags. Those are very handy items to have a nice clean stack of them available to snuggle, cuddle, and stay warm or just hunker down and go to sleep. Summertime is here. Start planting, even if it's just a flower pot, a windowsill, a flower bed in your garden, or a huge garden. Have a set of sturdy tools. I like to have some hand tools, and I tend to really go through these and destroy them a lot because I have such rocky soil. So uh, it's not always a good investment to just buy them at the Dollar Tree unless you just want extras or have the kids learn to garden with you or you're just gonna do a few little things. Then yes, simple hand tools that are inexpensive from even the Dollar Tree can do the trick. But if you're really gonna get out and really dig and work, you probably want to spend a little more so that they don't fail right when you're doing a task. Look at these old snippers. These have seen better days and they won't even cut anymore and they're so dull and it's time to replace them. And yes, I bought a new pair and I've already misplaced them. So keep track of your tools too so that this isn't all you end up with when you want to go out and do some trimming. The cultivator is probably one of my most useful tools and I had one I'd used so long, it was so beat up, and it looked like it needed some orthodontia work. So I treated myself to a new one so that I can really get going in the garden at my home and really make sure that I can be as productive as possible with my vegetable garden this year. Look through your basic hand tools. Do you have hammers, screwdrivers? pliers, how about a multi-tool, a small saw. There are just basic hand tools that everyone should have so that you're able to take care of simple do-it-yourself fixes around the house. There are little tasks that we need to do that if we need a few basic tools. So make sure that you have those tools on hand and you are able to take care of business. While it's great to have duct tape and zip ties, have a supply of nails and screws too because you never know when you need to fasten things together or screw them up then you'll want to have some nails and screws on hand. 
I noticed that two of the tires on my vehicles are not holding air properly, which can be a catastrophe in an emergency situation. So on my list of things to get is a tire repair kit and an air pump. Now it's nice to have things like fix a flat, but if you have any kind of say electronic measurements that keep track of your tires that you have a fancy automobile or truck then you want to be cautious about using something like fix a flat that it won't interfere with those uh, kind of electronics so you want to read your guide or check with your manufacturer check with your dealer before you use something like that if you have any kind of gauges that measure the air in your tires your tire pressure if you don't already have a good supply of buckets, get some. Not just for storing food, you might want to haul water, you might want to catch fish, you might want to just haul dirt to your garden. There are many reasons why having buckets is a great idea. So pick up a few extras, put some with your tools so that you're ready for any task. Then look over your knives, your kitchen knives and the ones you might have in your survival and your bug out gear. Are they sharp? Do you know how to sharpen a knife? Maybe take this time to learn that skill. Get a few tools for knife sharpening. Learn how to do that. The most dangerous knife is a dull knife and you can ask people who work in the emergency room, people trying to slice things like bagels, tomatoes with dull knives, they end up cutting their hand and end up in the emergency room because they didn't take the time to use a proper tool and be a little more safe with it. Inspect your knives, learn to sharpen them, and then take care of them so that they are able to do the cutting that you need. So prepping isn't just about gear and equipment, it's also about skills. So I've been to the thrift store and I picked up some books that I can add to my prepping library to help me have more skills. I only paid a dollar or two for the books and the first one is a Boy Scout handbook. And yes, I've had plenty of Boy Scouts in my family, but when they grew out of scouting, I donated the books back to the scouts so they could give them to kids who maybe couldn't afford it. So then when I found this one for only $1, I wanted to have one for myself. You can see it has colored tabs. So it's got all kinds of categories, first aid, aquatics, nature, outdoor ethics, hiking, camping, cooking, navigation, tools. There are all kinds of skills in here that even a child can learn, which means we can too. They're not difficult, they're just maybe skills that we were never taught or we learned them once but we forgot. And they're important life skills for anyone to know. You don't have to be a Boy Scout to wanna to know how to hike safely and how to cook over an open fire, but you can learn some of those basic skills in a book like this. For one dollar, I found the Grit Cookbook. These are over 100 years of recipes, so guess what, they're basic. How did people used to cook things 100 years ago? They didn't go to McDonald's. They didn't buy uncrustable pre-made frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They actually looked in their pantry. They got out basic ingredients and cooked things. And those directions are in here. The very first recipe is a dried apple fruit cake, which no, it doesn't have to be like the fruit cakes we used to joke about, but it might be. And you add some dried raisins, dried apples, and those are simple to have on hand. There's no oddball ingredients, butter, sugar, milk, eggs, baking soda, flour, molasses, and then the raisins and apples. None of those are oddball ingredients. Those are basic ingredients you should have in your prepper pantry. You can look up all kinds of different muffin mixes, basic pound cakes, huckleberry cake. I've always felt that huckleberries were wild blueberries, so if you think there's something different, leave it in the comments below and help educate us on what are huckleberries. There's how to make omelets. Ooh, rock lobster stuffed potatoes. Now that might be a little bit of an extreme ingredient, but it would be nice to know. Then there are categories on meats, casseroles, pies, 
all the basic ingredients that maybe you don't even have those kind of cookbooks anymore. It even has a whole category on pickling and preserving, which might be something we all need to know more about in the future. And it isn't that hard, it just requires a little bit of knowledge, a little practice, and some time. These are skills we might want to learn about so that we know what do we want to make. I also found Alpha Bakery because this one is for kids. It goes through each letter of the alphabet and gives you something simple to prepare. So it's not only a great and colorful way to teach your children how to prepare food for themselves, but it has some just basic ingredients, basic recipes that are easy enough that anybody can make. I figure if a child can make them, couldn't I also? And the answer is yes. They even have how to make oatmeal pancakes. And oatmeal is something we have in our stockpile of prepping food. So here's an easy basic recipe for how to use your oatmeal to make pancakes. The favorite book I found was The Best of the Best from Alaska Cookbook that's a regional cookbook from recipes of people who live in Alaska and of the foods, then the meats, the plants that you can find here. There are probably books like that wherever you live that help you learn to use the foods that are most readily available where you are. There's everything from ptarmigan salad to moose chili, it tells you how to make homesteaders honey, fireweed herb garden jelly, and there are all kinds of things. Crab puffs, salmon and mushrooms, how to smoke salmon. And these are all uh, important foods that I would like to know how to prepare and new ways to use those things. And so something like a regional cookbook of easy to prepare foods from people who live where you do. So think about the basic items that you need for your prepping. You need, yes, food, water, shelter, but then you also need just some basic supplies to help life run smoothly every single day. There are gonna be challenges for all of us and we need to be ready to face them. So the more supplies you have, the more ways you know how to use your supplies and the more skills you develop, the better outcome you're going to have with any challenge that you face. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny Channel.